Hi, I'm Rabi, also known as Ambrose Crochet somewhere on the internet, and today I'm going to try and make some pot holders. Now, obviously I've come out with some pot holders, which are the ones you're seeing, but this was actually my first time trying to make them, so I definitely made some mistakes and um, I could definitely improve my tension when it comes to tapestry crochet, if you watch the video with the BTS tote bag that's evident there as well. Um, I think I've gotten a little bit better but uh, definitely not <laughs> not not perfect yet uh, which is fine but you know I decided to still kind of tell you what I did and tell you what I think I might improve or I might have changed something but so that and maybe your pot holders will look a little bit better and I think it's a, like a really nice idea for you know not necessarily like a last last minute gift but uh, still you know um, I think I'm posting this like one week or something before Christmas so you definitely still have time to make them if you want to so uh, yeah, let's get into the video. I'm just going to kind of narrate what I'm doing. Not exactly a tutorial because um, it, it doesn't really need to be a proper tutorial. It's just a, a few set of, you know, steps that you can follow to make some pot holders. So, let's get to it. Okay, so here's what we will need. Some cotton. I went with white and red cotton. A crochet hook to match your yarn, in my case it's going to be a 2.5mm crochet hook, scissors, some stuffing which is going to have to be heat insulating and then tape measure and optional you're going to need paper and pen. Here are the stitches we will be working with, chain stitch and single crochet. I'm doing this voiceover style which means I feel a little bit like a tour guide but I'm going to tell you what I did first and then I'm going to tell you why I think that was a bad idea. So the first thing that I did was I made the back of the pot holders. So I wanted to make pot holders that are about 15 centimeters by 15 centimeters. So I just chained until I reached 15 centimeters widthwise and then I chained once more and then went back in each chain with one single crochet. And then at the end of that row, chain one single crochet all the way back and so on and so forth until I reached 15 centimeters in height. Now the reason I did that was because I wanted to know exactly how many rows and how many stitches I would have to then make the design at the front using tapestry crochet. And the reason why this was a bad idea for me is because my tension sucks when it comes to tapestry crochet. So I could have simply made the front first and then match the size of the back to the front centimeters wise instead of using stitches and rows, which would have been better for me, but I did not do that. So maybe you can change that. And that was the first first step. My second step was mapping out the design, so because I now know that I have 40 stitches when it comes to the width and 46 rows when it comes to the height, I just took my paper and pen and I drew a rectangle which had 40 stitches when it comes to the width and 46 rows when it comes to the height. So it was one square uh, equals one stitch and one square equals one row, which isn't you know exact because it should have been a square but you know, just for simplicity's sake. And then I just drew my design and I marked with an X each spot where I knew that I would need to change colors to get the design itself, which was in my case a little snowflake. And also, yes, I realized way too late that I missed two details at the bottom. I know, I, I wanted to cry, but um, that's just how it went. So step three for me was following my own pattern, which was a, lo a little bit confusing at first because I'm used to working in rounds, so I'm not used to going back and forth, but I got used to it pretty quickly. Two things that I noticed was the first one is the back of the stitches will naturally look different from the front of the stitches, that's pretty normal. So maybe one row will look a little bit different, but overall I didn't find that to be too much of an issue. And the second thing that I noticed, and I noticed this while making the first pot holder, which is something I tried to correct in the second one, is that because you're working with two 
strands of yarn when it comes to the front and you're working with one strand of yarn when it comes to the back that will naturally mess up your tension and my tension already sucks so I didn't need anything to mess it up even more so what I did was instead of carrying the yarn through all the way when I changed colors I left the yarn hanging on the back of the pot holder and then I picked it back up again when I needed to change colors again so I didn't cut it I just left it hanging obviously the back of the pot holder looks like a mess but because no one has to see it I figured it was okay and that helped a little bit so I don't know if that's something I shouldn't have done but it worked for me so I'm, I'm telling you so the fourth step for me was blocking the squares and I mostly did this because of the size difference. I know, it's bad. I know, I'm, I'm sorry. And then the fifth step for me was single crocheting the two squares together, so one front and one back. And I didn't single crochet them together simply by single crocheting the last round, but the last two rounds or rows, sorry, because I like the look of that a little bit better and you want to make three single crochets in the corners obviously because you want to turn and then once i had two sides done i added the stuffing i then added a little loop on the corner i just chained about 20 21 chains and then went back and made single crochets because i like the idea of hanging the little pot holder but obviously this is optional Okay, and here are the two pot holders done. And listen, they're not perfect because obviously they're not, but I quite like them and I find really neat that I could make some pot holders. And I found quite interesting that I could find the stuffing. I don't know why it had never occurred to me that some stuffing that is heat insulating has to exist for like normal pot holders, because I know that there is a specific stitch that you can use when it comes to crocheting pot holders. But I never thought of the stuffing, so it was very interesting and I really wanted to use that because I wanted to use tapestry crochet even though I'm so bad at it. But it was very interesting and I really liked it as a project, so I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to subscribe, leave a like, leave a comment, that's always much appreciated. And if you want to check out the other videos that I have up in December, uh, because I have quite a few of them, please feel free to. And if you have any questions or any requests, you can leave them in the comments down below. You can find me on my social media, which is probably somewhere on the screen right now, where you can also ask me questions. And, and if you have any requests for patterns or tutorials or anything, I will be glad to um, comply. And I'd say that's it. I will see you for the next one. Bye.